We're on problem 61. If one kilometer is approximately 0.6 miles, one kilometer is approximately 0.6 miles, which of the following best approximates the number of kilometers in two miles? So we want to know two miles. So we could set up a ratio. We could say 0.6 is to two, right? 0.6 miles are to two miles as one kilometer is to x kilometers. And you could cross multiply. You could say 0.6 is equal to two, and that x is equal to two divided by 0.6, which is the same thing as 20 divided by six, right? 20 divided by six is equal to three and two sixths, right? Three and one third. Three and one third. Three and one third kilometers. And that makes sense, right? A mile is longer than a kilometer, so two miles is about three and one third kilometers. And that's not one of the choices, but if we wrote this as an improper fraction, three times three is nine plus one is ten. So that equals ten over three kilometers, which is choice A. A. Let me do a brighter color. I don't know if you can even see this. 62. Lucy invested $10,000 in a new mutual fund account exactly three years ago. $10,000 three years ago. The value of the account increased by 10% during the first year. So plus 10% during the first year. Increased by 5% during the second year. Plus 5% during the second year. And decreased by 10%. And then decreased by 10% during the third year. What is the value of the account today? So you start with $10,000. When you grow by 10%, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1.1, right? Right? It's like 1 plus 0.1 times whatever. So that's multiplying by 1.1. And then you grow by another 5%, that's like multiplying by 1.05. And then when you decrease by 10%, that's like multiplying by 0.9. So we need to figure out what this is. This is so this is a little bit, a little bit of math for us to do. So 1.1 times 10,000. That's at least fairly straightforward. That's 11,000. Right. That's how much we have after year one. 11,000, and we have to multiply that times 1.05, and then times, and then we lose 10%. So 11,000 times 1.05. Well, just to make sure I get it right, just so I don't make a careless mistake, let's actually do it. 11,000 times 1.05. So 5 times 11,000 is 55,000. And then we should add 2 zero. The 0 doesn't matter, so we add two zeros. And then 1 times 11,000 is 11,000. You add them up, you get 0, 0, 0, 5, 5, 1, 1. And we have two digits behind the decimal point. So we got 11,550, which is right. I mean, I would have been, it would have been weird if we got 100,000 or if we got 1,000, right? We only had a 5% change. So then we have 11,550. And now, we, now it's going to decrease by 10%, or we could multiply it by 0.9. I don't know. It might be easier just to take out 10%. Well, let's multiply it by 0.9 times 0.9, 0.9. 9 times 0 is 0, 9 times 0 is 0, 9 times 5 is 45, 9 times 1 is 9, plus 4 is 13, 9 times 1 is 9, plus 1 is 10. And we have one digit behind the decimal point within which so it's right there. So we're left with $10,350, and that is choice A. Next problem. Next problem, 63. 63, and they give us this table. They say a computer chip manufacturer expects the ratio of the number of defective chips to the total number of chips in all future shipments to equal the corresponding ratio for shipments as combined as shown in the table. What is the expected number of in a shipment? OK, so let me write down what they wrote so that we're, we, we see the same thing. So shipment, shipment, and they label them S1. 
S2, S3, and S4. And then they need to ask us the number of, of defective chips in the shipment. I know you can't read my handwriting. Two, five, six, and four. And then they say the total number of ship chips total in each shipment is five thousand, five thousand, twelve thousand, eighteen thousand, eighteen thousand, and sixteen thousand. Now let's re reread the question. Maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. A computer chip manufacturer expects the ratio of the number of defective chips, so defective chips, to the total number of chips, so that's defective to total, in all future chip in all future shipments to equal the corresponding ratio for shipments S1 through S4 combined, okay, as shown in the table above. Is equal to let me make sure I read that. In all future to equal the corresponding ratio for shipments S1, S2, S3, and S4 combined as shown in the table above. What is the expected number of defective chips in a shipment of sixty thousand? So they're saying essentially if we take all if we take these shipments combined, what percentage were defective? And that's the same number we would expect to be defective in a shipment of sixty thousand. So let's figure out what percentage are defective. So how many total were defective? Seven. Two plus five is seven. Seven plus six is thirteen. Thirteen plus four is seventeen. And how many total chips did we ship? Seventeen thousand. Seventeen plus eighteen is thirty-five. Thirty-five plus sixteen. Thirty-five plus sixteen is forty-one. Is equal to fifty-one thousand chips. Fifty-one thousand. So we could view it a couple of ways. Let's, it's seventeen for every fifty-one thousand were were defective. But actually, if you haven't realized it already, fifty-one is divisible by seventeen. That's one that a lot of people miss. Seventeen times three. So that if we divide both of these numbers by seventeen, we say we can say that one chip for every three thousand is defective it, if we take shipments S1 through S4 combined. One chip in every three thousand. And so if we have that same ratio for sixty thousand chips, well how many groups of three thousand are there in sixty thousand? Well there are twenty of them, right? We could say one in three thousand is equal to X over sixty thousand. And you could eyeball this to some degree. Or you could just say, you know, what can I multiply both the numerator and the denominator this by to get sixty thousand? Well, if I multiply the numerator and the denominator by twenty, I get twenty over sixty thousand. You could cross multiply. There's a bunch of ways you could do this, but the bottom line is that you would expect twenty defective chi chips, and that is choice B. B. Problem sixty-four. Do it in this color. Let's see. They tell us that A is equal to a set of numbers. I don't know what the context is yet. Two, three, four, and five. And they tell us that B is equal to another set of numbers. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Two integers will be randomly selected from the sets above. One integer from set A and one integer from set B. What is probability that the sum of the two integers will equal nine? Is equal is equal will equal nine. So let's think about all of the combinations that equal nine. Right? So if so no matter what so all of these so if I pick two from this set, right, each of these course if I pick two from this, I have to pick Seven from here, right? If I pick three from this set, I have to pick six from here. If I pick four from this set, I have to pick five from here. If I pick five from this set, I have to pick four from here, right? So no matter what, so you know, I'm going to pick one of these numbers, right, from set one. I'm, it's going to be two, three, or four, or five. And depending which of these I pick, I have to pick the exact right number from set B. So think of it this way. I, I don't know what I picked in set A, right? I don't know. Let's say we've picked one of them. We don't know which of these we've picked. And we know that exactly one of these is going to be the right number to add to whatever we've picked to equal 9. So we have 
and we have to pick that exactly right one. And, how, and we're going to be picking it out of a selection of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers. So we have a 1 in 5 chance of having them add up to 9. And 1 in 5 is the same thing as 0.2, which is choice B. I hope that makes sense. You can say, look, I don't care what I pick from set 1. I can pick any of these. And in order for it to add up from 9, so I, you know, I know I can pick any random one from there's a No matter what I pick from here, there's a 1 fifth chance that I pick the right corresponding number that, that adds up to 9 there. Because each of these have only one that you have. If I picked 3, I have to pick 5, right? So if I, if I, picked, if I pick 2, I have to pick 7. If I pick 3, I have to pick 5. If I pick, if I pick uh, 6, I have to pick 3. Oh, no, if I pick 3, I have to pick 6. And if I pick, oh no, sorry, if I pick 4, I have to pick 5. And if I pick 5, I have to pick 4, right? And so you could say, well, the chances of each of these are 1 fifth. Well, actually, I'm not going to go down that road. All you have to say is, that just complicates, overly complicates it. All you have to say is, look, I'm going to pick one of these. And once I have one of those in my hand, there's a 1 fifth chance that I pick the exact one that adds up to what, whatever I just picked to equal 9. The answer is B. And now I am out of time. See you.